the Met Gala was over a week ago. So most of us have at this point had the chance to take in all the looks and really consider what we loved seeing, what we felt missed the mark, what we didn't enjoy at all, who was the best dressed, who was the worst dressed, all that sort of thing. And I know for me, there is one look in particular that has been living rent free in my head. And it is so upsetting to me that I finally just wanted to come here and talk about it. Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style. And this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. The theme for the Met Gala this year was the Garden of Time. And the exhibition on display is titled Sleeping Beauty's Reawakening Fashion. Generally, the assumption was that guests would lean into either or with regards to their looks this year. And with Sleeping Beauties, we were expecting them to reference Sleeping Beauty as an actual character in the fairy tale, but also reawakening fashion, meaning all the styles of yesteryear or yester decade. So referencing old designers or past collections, silhouettes of the 1900s or as far back as they could go, referencing those fabrics and techniques that were in use a long time ago and aren't anymore. So really bringing back something that has been asleep or something that hasn't been seen and making it contemporary or making it relevant to today, that would have been one way to interpret it. With the Garden of Time, I think most of us were expecting to see a lot of florals, and we did. And for the Garden of Time specifically, I thought that this could go one of two ways. One was the dark sort of vampy and dramatic in essence feel that you could lean into. And this references the witch in the Snow White story, for example. I picture the woods, I picture something cold and dark, I picture a scary kind of vampy, sort of vampire-esque character. And we definitely saw this referenced, Kendall Jenner, who did this beautifully. I love this look on her. I love the silhouette. I love that V cutout. I think that detailing in the shoulder and in her neckline is so spectacular. It's detailed just enough where the entire focus is still on her. The dress doesn't take away from her, but it really accentuates everything that is beautiful about her. It's it's so wonderful on her. I think she really picked out all the things that are great about her and found a dress that would just speak to that. It also references the Sleeping Beauties aspect because I believe she's the first person to wear it. I think when it first came out originally, it was on a mannequin. So she is bringing it to life. But I really see that reference of the queen and the Snow White sort of storyline. I feel that way. And she looks so youthful, which really ties to that. I almost get the sense that she is dark and vampire and siphoning people's youth and that's why she looks so good it's really on theme i think she looks stunning and it's a wonderful reference we also saw this this look by tiana taylor i think does a similar thing but in a different way i think she looks great in it too and you can see the florals coming through. It's still very vampy for me. It has that dark energy, but it's absolutely stunning. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Lana Del Rey to the right. I think she was so on theme, very much carried that well. In the middle, I think is Lala Anthony and to the left is Ashley Graham, I believe. And all of these people really leaned into that darker aspect of this sort of fairy tale. And one of my other favorites that referenced this was Gwendolyn Christie. And I think she looks absolutely stunning. She is a tall woman and she has, if I had to guess, I would obviously place her as a soft dramatic, right? See all of that curve and all that length. But again, this is really a video that's going to focus on essence. 
especially with this sort of thematic dressing, what matters most is whether you have the essence to pull off something or not. And she is, of course, helped by her stature. So that's one of the big elements of she shows up and you see her because she is so tall and she has that curve and she's wearing that deep color and then her hair is so big. So she's really playing into the drama of it all. And I just, I, I love how it all came together for her. And the second way that this could have been referenced is the opposite way. It's soft and it's almost the pixie or Tinkerbell, something so sweet and innocent and that really pulls on the ethereal and ingenue essence. And I expected to see quite a lot of that as well. Now, when I think ingenue essence, I immediately think Elle Fanning. In my ingenue essence video, she's one of the people I referenced a lot because I think she really understands that this is her core essence. She dresses for it all the time. And she always just looks so beautifully youthful, fresh faced, and she has that innocence and it's so beautiful. And because she carries this so well, she generally plays these roles that pull that out of her. And it makes sense because it's a perfect costing job. She's currently playing Catherine the Great in The Great. Um, I don't know if it's current, but that's one of the roles that she has, that has been her focus. And you can see in this styling how wonderful she is a fit for it. This would be a little too overwhelming for most people. The costumes are so ornate. There's that trim, very detailed and ornate trim, small, tiny pieces. Everything is so delicate and so fussy. The hair itself is so detailed and there's all that very girly, elements that would just be too childish on most people but on her of course she looks spectacular i cannot imagine a better person to wear these clothes and play these roles and she just looks in her element likewise if we pull more that ethereal side of it she played princess aurora in maleficent and you can see that she's just perfect to do that sleeping beauty kind of thing she's so youthful and fresh and you, you believe it this was a perfect casting job yet again she also knows what just looks good on her and she leans into it so here are just a couple of examples where she brought the florals and the youthful styles and the youthful silhouettes and everything is airy and colorful and soft and delicate and she looks spectacular i love this look over here, look at all that floral detailing. Look at the soft tool, the flowy dresses. Look at all that detail and the trim. And again, that flowy sort of just, she looks so beautiful here. Every time I looked at her images, I was so excited to see what she would do with a theme like this. And look at how well she carries this look. She is five foot nine, so she is tall and she's able to really carry grandiose silhouettes as well as more streamlined and shorter styles. I love her hair here, all those little flowers in it, those big florals. I love the shoulders. She just looks so stunning. Again here, we're leaning into that ethereal. She is fresh, she's a little princess, and she looks beautiful. Most people can't wear styles like this because they are so youthful and ornate, and she really does it impeccably. And here you can see that she can, of course, carry a large skirt so she can do volume and drama, which is interesting because the Met is a place where you really can show out. That's a place if you want to do the large train, that's where you do it. So she had options about which direction she could go. And of course, she's not always on the red carpet. So sometimes when she's going for a more sub, well, these are the red carpet, but the looks themselves could be her just dressing in her regular life, maybe for a dinner or something fancy, but that isn't ball gown-esque. And even still, you can see that she leans into that floral, soft, girly, ultra feminine, ultra youthful kind of style. And it is so stunning on her. In this one look with the pigtails, <laughs> I don't know many people who can wear pigtails and still 
carry a sense of dignity about them. But because this is her essence, she still looks stunning here. She really is just so, 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 so beautiful. And even here, when we go even less formal and we have shorter styles, which are even more youthful in essence, she still looks great. I couldn't wear any of these looks. I would look awful and they would just be much too delicate for me. I don't have this essence, but she does and she knows she does and she just looks absolutely stunning. All right, here we see what happens when she is void of detailing. And you can see it's suddenly so boring and it really drains her and the, the spark is lost, especially in these first three, she's still in her colors. There's that bit of warmth to it, but the, the fabric to the far left is too stiff. Um, but the dress itself also has absolutely no detailing. It's just, that's not her at her best. She requires that, that delicacy and that ornate detail to really come to life. Similar with the second and the third looks, there's just nothing to focus on. It's incredibly boring and we need that for her. I love the little bow detail on her shoulders. It adds that touch of youthfulness that she requires but it's really not enough to save the dress i want more flowers in it i want ruffles i want all the girly things to bring her to life this look to the right is by far the worst firstly that white color is too stark on her uh, but also the yes it has little bows but the fabric is just not right for her it's too stiff and too it doesn't have enough flowiness. It kind of, it, it strips away, it lacks the whimsy that she requires. And that comes in with a flowy fabric, something that could fly away. That is her element. This is just there. And it really does absolutely nothing for her. We can see this again here. So this very pink dress to the left is too stiff. Yes, it's very pink, so it's very girly. And it has that very youthful silhouette, like a princess kind of dress. And typically that would be great for her. But in the stiff fabric, it just lacks the life and the movement. So she requires both the youthful ingenue, but also the sense of a touch of ethereal in it. So something that flows, that could kind of float away is, is her best. And then these two fabrics to the right are a bit heavier, but they are less heavy and stiff than the one to the left and they look great. This is how she does something that's more sophisticated, I suppose, but in still keeping with her elements, that bow is beautiful, adds a touch of detailing. I do still wish there was more detail to this dress, but this is okay. It's, it's fine. And to the right, I do love that on her. It's so clean if she really wanted to do the minimalistic route. There's something about the way that the skirt shapes and it has those curves in it, those beautiful folds. And um, she looks stunning. I would maybe like a shoe that had a beautiful watercolor pattern on it that would do nicely and some jewelry that did something similar would be best. But I can understand that she doesn't always want to look like a fairy tale princess but these two looks are a way to kind of tone that down but still maintain her essence and here we have her in black so black is a bit stark of a color for her because she is such a soft and delicate kind of essence she really does amazing in the lighter area sort of coloring but she can wear black and you can see that in these three looks, the first one is really just kind of boring to the left. In the middle, it's anchored by some of the delicate elements that really work well with her. There's that bow in at her waist, and there's that flared silhouette of her skirt that really makes it more youthful as compared to the first look, and she looks better in the middle one. Again, her hair is also done in a more delicate and ornate way. All these things are elevating it and bringing it closer to her essence, and she looks more harmonious. 
and she looks she comes alive more in that look and in the third one it's even girlier and softer and more delicate right we have that beautiful flower detail which will always be amazing on her and the tool skirt which is softer has more flow and she has that little choker which is a delicate touch and it all just comes together so she's found a way to wear black yes but to make it more suitable for herself and more suitable will always be softer and more more feminine and ingenue at the same time and now i just want to spend some time talking about how difficult this is right this essence this delicacy this youthfulness is a very difficult thing for most people to pull off because most people do not have that level of ingenue it can be there in a touch but for it to be your dominant essence and for you to dress for it so well is is quite rare here you can see that it's it just looks so off on most people here's nicole kidman who for whatever reason really loves to lean into these very youthful and girlish styles but they just don't work for her because she doesn't have the essence and she just it's very separate from her and here are some more people it, it's not working for them there's Jane Fonda and it just doesn't work for her it's too youthful there's Dakota Johnson and even Zendaya to the right Zendaya has a few essences at play but I, I think her dominant would be dramatic and romantic but I do think she has a touch of ingenue but definitely not enough to anchor an entire look and this look is purely ingenue and it just does not work on her it looks too childish like she's wearing a little girl's dress and that's typically what happens here we have Blake Lively in the middle and Jennifer Lawrence to the right and um, Scarlett Johansson to the left again the elements are too soft and girly too youthful and on them it just juxtaposes because none of them have that very youthful essence to make it to make it natural on them here we have Margot Robbie who again does not have this essence and when she leans into these overly girly kind of looks it's just very it does nothing for her and it's too delicate much too delicate for her and her bone structure and it's it's none of them are the are her best looks now you might be thinking maybe it has to do with Elle's age she's only 26 and she is younger than the people i've been referencing so maybe that's the youthful aspect that allows her to pull it off but firstly essence doesn't age right if you have the ingenue essence you'll have it forever and here kirsten dunst also has the ingenue essence and she's in her 40s now and she can still pull these styles off she looks absolutely beautiful in these very youthful tool-esque and whimsical gowns she has that same sort of makeup going on except she also has a classic essence so but she can really do uh, these styles and really pull them off. Lily Collins also has quite a bit of ingenue. I don't know. I think she has something else going on, but she can definitely pull these off. This very princessy gown to the right, and the one right before that, that white dress is very light and flowy and really evokes a sort of angelic feel, and she can do that really well. Another interesting case is. Kate Blanchett. Now, Kate Blanchett does not have an ingenue essence, but she does have an ethereal essence. And there's a bit of overlap there, right? The ethereal is that flowy, very feminine, but mature in a way that the ingenue is not. So here you can see that if we compare the look to the left and the look in the middle, she looks much better in the one in the middle. She's pulling all of these off, but I would say the look to the left where the petals are really small is borderline. It works for a lot of other reasons, but those petals themselves are not her greatest because it starts to kind of tilt the scales towards ingenue and that's not her, that's not where she falls. 
but the middle one has bigger petals. So it's like the flower itself is more mature and it just leans ethereal and that is where she shines. Likewise, the look to the right, that flowy fabric, that beautiful draping. So it's feminine, but it's grown and it's delicate and it's just stunning on her. Here she's really leaning into the ingenue kinds of styles. These are looks that I would prefer for a much either a very young person or somebody who definitely has the ingenue as their main essence. And since, since Kate does not, these are very inharmonious with her. I don't want to see her in tool. This is a little too childish for her. So this brings us back to Al Fanning. She definitely has this essence as we've seen and discussed at length. So I was dying to see how she was going to really rise up to this moment. One of the reasons I was so excited for this is it's not often that you get the ingenue essence as being the main component in something, right? There's a lot of ways, again, that this theme could have been interpreted and every essence could have found a way to make it their own. But I really feel like this one, this was the moment for the ingenue essence to shine. Typically, style moments are created by women who have a strong dramatic essence and and or a strong romantic essence. Zendaya, for example, is somebody who can always turn a look and she, those are her two main essences. And it's no surprise to me. She has those two essences. And then on top of that, she is tall and she is shaped like a model, right? She was made to model. So she has all the things going for her. And then she has a great artistic eye and she is just really a designer's dream. So all those things work into always having her create these amazing looks. Although I did not like her Met Gala looks and I will discuss that in a different video. But for someone with an ingenue essence, I was so excited because this was the moment when they really could come to the forefront. I knew that a lot of people were going to be trying to reference this kind of style and a lot of people were going to do a bad job of it because it's these looks aren't easy to pull off if you don't have that essence as your focal point, as your dominant essence, and most people don't. So I was beyond excited to see what Al could do. And honestly, she has done this so beautifully in the past at so many different events that she could have turned up in any of these looks, for example, and really stolen the show, maybe taken it up a notch a little bit, but this would have been amazing because of this event and this theme. I was so ready for her to really do any of this. And she also had options. She could have leaned into the time period of it, right? This is about reawakening fashion. So she could have gone more in that direction and referenced something from the 1800s or whenever really in history when the styles were different and this detailing was so ornate and we saw how beautifully she plays in the character of uh, Catherine the Great and she could have gone that route and really looked amazing. She also could have very easily gone the more ethereal route and this is her when she was playing Sleeping Beauty and she could have referenced that and really gone into that sort of direction. I imagine that she might have done something very sculptural if she wanted, where she herself was sort of referencing a flower. She, maybe not in these colors, but in colors that suited her, maybe a soft pink and a white. I could have, I really saw this coming together. Or she could have referenced something like the fairy tale with Red Riding Hood, right? So in the wood, but much lighter. So not the dark aspect. It could have been a hood of these beautiful light flowers like the model to the right has. It would have really gone more fantasy with it and had things coming out. I know that this 3D kind of printout is a very great technique that a lot of designers do. So she could have done that. She normally has something in her hair, something 
beautiful and feminine and girly and ethereal and these are all great so she could have taken that and gone up a notch these are such amazing head pieces that depending on which direction she chose something like one of these could have worked something like that and the makeup in the middle i think would have been so stunning maybe not as bold or as bold depending again on what direction she chose so with all of that <laughs> I was so excited to see what she was going to wear. And she gave us nothing. I swore this look and I don't think I have ever been more sad to see something and just, it did not make sense to me. I thought with all the references that with all the looks that she has had in the past, really, I felt like this is the moment that any of them could have had their moment. I, I think this was a missed opportunity like no other. And it really, really saddens me. Now, I will say that she does look absolutely stunning. She's a beautiful human being. I think this dress looks great on her. It fits her beautifully. I like the sculptural aspect of it and it has the birds and she was referencing sleeping beauty she said they were these are the birds that are like dressing her and it it looks beautiful of course it does but for her in this moment at this event with this theme this was not her time to go very subtle i really think that she missed an opportunity to do something incredibly spectacular and really pull off a look that only she could have and every time i see this dress i get incredibly sad incredibly sad and i don't think i'm ever going to get over it at least not anytime soon <laughs> A part of me does think that maybe she does do this so often that she wanted to do something completely different and not play into that very girly, ethereal, ingenue essence as she always does. And I do respect that. I just cannot get over how in this moment, this is what she chose to wear. I look at her hair and I'm upset there are no flowers in it. There is absolutely no detail. I look at her makeup and it's too just pure and clean. I wanted some watercolor, anything. I look at her dress and I want to cry. I really, 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 really am sad about Elle Fanning at the Met Gala more than anything else, more than any other look. Does she look amazing? Of course, she looks beautiful. But was this a missed opportunity? Absolutely. All right, I'm done lamenting. And I would love to hear what anybody else thinks. Was I the only person who was upset by this? Because I was upset. I'm still upset. I am still upset. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.